We will now discuss basic probability and sampling and how that relates to Monte Carlo. Let's first talk about random variables. They describe all the possible outcomes of an experiment. Let's consider a discrete case, example the value of a dice roll. In this case, the random variable x can have values that range from 1 to 6. There is a probability p associated with each x, which is 1 sixth for the dice. The continuous case is an obvious extension of the discrete case, whereas in the discrete case you have a finite summation over all possible outcomes of the probability of outcome i times x of i. In the continuous case, you replace that with an integral from 0 to 1 of the probability of the outcome x times some f of x, which gives you the value or the random variable corresponding to x. For the dice example, the expected value of the dice row will be the sum of the random variables xi weighted by 1 over 6. So 1 sixth of 1 plus 2 plus 3 4 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6, which is equal to 1 sixth of 21, which is equal to 3.5. The expected value of a dice roll is therefore 3.5. In general, we can talk about the probability distribution function or PDF P of x. P of x must always be greater than or equal to zero. In the case of a uniform probability distribution as shown on this slide, P of x is equal to one. The requirement for it to be a probability is that the integral of P of x dx has to be equal to one. The cumulative distribution function, or CDF, which is denoted by capital P of x, is a function which considers the integral of the probability distribution function up to some value. Let's say this is big X. It can also be considered the probability that the random variable is less than the X value that you're thinking about. For example, if you consider the cumulative distribution function at 1, we are considering the probability that this random variable will be less than 1, which if its range is from 0 to 1, that is equal to 1. But at earlier values, the cumulative distribution function essentially stores the integral of the probability distribution up to some value. For the case of a uniform probability distribution, the cumulative distribution function is simply a linear ramp going from 0 to 1. It's easy to understand that if you consider the cumulative distribution function value here, it's simply an integral of the corresponding region in the probability distribution function and therefore it increases linearly to 1. If you want to find the probability that the random variable is between some alpha and some beta value, then you can simply subtract out the corresponding cumulative distribution function values. These are basic concepts when talking about probability and statistics. The problem for us is how do we generate random points or directions during path tracing when we have non-rectilinear domains, when we may want to take those paths and do what is known as important sampling according to features such as the BRDFs of surfaces, and when we want to do things like stratified sampling that I'll discuss later, to distribute samples in a more even manner. Let's just talk about it in 1D for the moment. How do we generate random points in the first place? 
everything starts with a uniform random distribution. You simply use the random number generator in your computer to create a uniform random distribution. That is, it picks a value or a number between 0 and 1 with uniform probability. All numbers between 0 and 1 can be chosen with equal probability. There are a variety of random number generators. Of course, true randomness in nature would require you to do something like look at the radioactive decay of an element. But the pseudo-random number generators in modern computers can produce something that is very close to true randomness. However, that only gives you uniform distribution. In most applications of computer graphics, you also need a distribution that has a particular shape as shown here. What we will study is how this distribution can be created from a uniform random distribution by methods such as function inversion, rejection sampling, or if you're interested, you can look up metropolis sampling. In summary, we want to sample probability distributions, that is, draw samples distributed according to some probability. This is useful for integration, picking important regions, etc. Common distributions that we want to sample from are a disk or a circle, a uniform probability distribution, the upper hemisphere for integrating direct lighting or for visibility, an area light source or an area luminaire. We want to sample a complex lighting such as an environment map. I wrote a paper about this nearly 20 years ago. Or we want to be able to sample complex reflectance like BRDF. How do we sample continuous probability distributions? I want to acknowledge my PhD advisor, Pat Hanrahan, from whom I have taken a few of these slides. You can do this by what is known as inverting the cumulative distribution function. Here we have a cumulative distribution function. The x-axis corresponds to this variable x and the y-axis corresponds to the cumulative distribution function. Now, if you want to sample according to the probability distribution function underlying the CDF, it can be shown that the way in which you can do that is to pick a random point on the y-axis using a uniform probability distribution. That is, pick a number between 0 and 1 uniformly along the y-axis, referring to that number as u. And then invert the cumulative distribution function. Find p inverse of this uniform value. That will give you your value of x in your original probability distribution function, and then you can associate the appropriate function and evaluate what you want to do with that sample x. Now, in order to apply this technique, which is known as inverting the CDF or inverting the cumulative distribution function, you first need to be able to construct the CDF. And because of that, you need to know the integral of the probability distribution function p of x. Second, you need to know the inverse of the cumulative distribution function. In some cases, this inversion as well as the construction can be done numerically. There are also analytic formulae for the inversion for special cases such as uh, power x bar n, such as even for disks, circles, spheres, and so on. Here is a graphical representation of how that works. You have your cumulative distribution function. You can think about equally spaced regions along the y-axis. And if you want a sample according to the probability distribution function, then you pick a location on the y-axis randomly. Or if you want to stratify the samples, you might pick one sample in the 0 to 0.1, 1, 1 to 0.2, and so on. 
and then you find where that lies here. This is the inversion part. You come down here, and this is the corresponding sample value. So if you look at the distribution of samples in the original domain, you can see that they are clearly not uniform. Here the samples are spread out because the probability distribution function is not large, and therefore the cumulative distribution function goes up only slowly. Whereas here the cumulative distribution function is rising most quickly. Remember that the CDF is the integral of the probability distribution function, and the PDF is the derivative of the CDF. So in these regions, these samples are actually closer together. Still another approach is rejection sampling. In this case, you take your probability distribution function, you consider the maximum value, and so the value here has to be greater than the maximum of the PDF. In this case, uh, we've renormalized it, so this maximum value is 1, which is greater than the maximum value here. Now you distribute samples in 2D across this entire rectangle. But you only accept the samples if they lie within the original probability distribution function, that is, the white points here. On the other hand, the x's are rejected because they lie outside the original probability distribution function. Mathematically, that can be viewed like this. You are trying to find an integral, which is the integral of f of x dx, where x goes from 0 to 1. You replace that integral with an integral over the entire square. So it's a double integral over dx dy over this entire square. But you define y is equal to f of x, and the double integral is only when y is less than f of x, so only over this region of the square. This is a mathematically equivalent construction, but it enables us to develop the algorithm easily. So you pick two uniform random numbers, u1 and u2, and you accept u1, which is the x-coordinate here, only if the y-coordinate u2 is less than f of u1. That ensures that you accept samples which are below the curve you want to integrate. Now, of course, this can be a wasteful operation because you are generating many more samples than you accept, and the efficiency is determined by the area under the curve divided by the total area of the rectangle. It is one approach to sample a circle. You distribute samples in the square that surrounds the circle, and you reject the samples unless they actually lie within the circle. It's a reasonably efficient method because the circle occupies most of the square.